Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for ServiceNow admins, developers and whoever you might be. My name is Goran Lundqvist and today we're going to go through some fast and good ways for your administrators to work within your ServiceNow. And I'm also going to show you two little quick scripts that they might, fool, might be useful for you. The first quick tips will be when you got this great application with so much stuff is that if you, for example, would like to go to the service portal, you can start typing the two last letters in, in service, CE, and then space, and start writing portal. And then you can see it will show everything that has those letters within them. The same thing if you want to go to script include, script include. And then of course we got the buggy little favorite thing as well so let's hit that one script include and you can see it's a really fast way to get to the stuff you really want the second thing that might be useful is when you know the table's name i think most of the people know that if you type incident dot list it will actually if i can spell it might be better incident.list and if you type incident.list with capitals you will open it up in a new tab another thing if, if you type incident.do then you will automatically get a new record as well but you can't do it with real little because that doesn't work the last thing about these shortcuts is the config if you type config you will get the same place as when you right click on a, on a record, choose configure and then all. So you get a quick overview of all the different configurable stuff within the table. And that of course, incident.config with capitals will also work good as well. Another thing when we were to lists, let's go to task is that you probably heard that you should try to keep it to like 20 records per row because of performance. One thing is good to know is when people use group by like this, the 20 limit isn't really heard in the way you might think it should be. Because as you can see now, we have a lot of different group task types and within each of the task type, it actually is 20. So in this case we have 26 different task types and within those 26 you have 20 records and do the math that's a lot more than 20 records in total so be aware that the group by might be performance issues if you have too much as well now another thing we're going to talk about a little bit fast is the the syntax editor macros which means that if you go to a client script and when you are in the editor, you can actually make stuff show up pretty fast. Let's do test, just hit incident. Well, like uh, unload, for example. Now we're pretty lazy and we don't want to do things too much over and over again. So if I type the output box on var gr and hit tab, it fills in the rest of this stuff, which can be pretty useful, especially when it comes to glide IX calls and so on. When we don't do this often, you might not even remember what the exact syntaxes are. I'm one of those. So what you can do is let's go to client script. And in an earlier video, I made this client script which does a glide IX call. So let's copy this one. Then we go to something called syntax letter macros. And here you can see the default ones, for example, doc. So if I go in here and let's do it up here. If I type doc and hit tab, you get that pretty good feature as well. What you might see that there is this dollar sign zero. Earlier, you wrote that one to be able to point where the marker should be focusing after you had typed. But as you can see, when I typed 
or GR, the marker should be here and not down here. Sadly, that is probably something that is broken or doesn't work anymore. But you might as well add it in yours, since you never know when it starts to work again. So let's see, we would like to make our own. We'll hit new. Let's call this then Ward Clyde Ajax. And since you might have two different Clyde Ajax, and one that returns a JSON and one that doesn't. So let's make this the JSON. Yes. Uh, comment Clyde Ajax with JSON return. And then we have text. And then of course, we would like to remove this and we would like to have the marker there when it works. We probably would like to have this one and that one we don't need. But we need to at least have the name to call the function. And we'll give a more general name like handled response. We do like that and then remove that one as well. Kind of like that. So, and um, let's save this on. So this one is pretty long, but if I go here, this be fun, word GI JSON. And you see it doesn't work because I have to reload it. Here we go, test incident. Unload, word, GR, GA, JSON, tab. And there we go. So this is a, a real nice way to keep adding those macros. You don't have to type everything over and over again. And of course, your code looks a little bit more the same whenever you go as well. Uh, two, 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 two. Yeah, and the two last things I was going to show you that hopefully can help you is, is two different functions. One function that you can use either as in fixed scripts or yeah, well, whatever you want, it's called, I call it find sysid and I actually found that code for like two, three years ago and I just saved it because it might be useful someday. And it has. <laughs> so I basically can do it two ways. I'm going to show you one way, and then another way. So I made a script include <coughs> called script find sysid. Made some comments about it. So basically, what it does is that you put in a sysid. It has some return string starting with that one. Then it goes into the table sysdb objects, and then goes through all of those, try to get that sysid, and when it finds a record, it will save the table name. And then it will return a string. Now, what you can do, for example, of course, use it in your uh, script background. I'm going to show that. And then, of course, we have to do this boring stuff. So let's hit scripts. I'll right click, open that here. And let's find something. Let's go, perhaps sometimes you have like this. <clears throat> so let's get the sysid for this client script. And then we do gs debug, find sysid, and we enter the sysid. Now, since it's depending on the instance, this might take like, 15, 20 seconds or something. And that's why I'm gonna show you the fixed script instead, because at the moment we will hit this one and then we'll have to wait for about, I think it was 10 seconds perhaps. Might even be 15 when we're live, of course. So come on, there you go. As you can see, it tried to go into the HR tables, but we don't have access to that one. But here in the bottom, you can say that we found it in these two different ones. And you even get a URL, you can take that. And I can just paste it in here. <coughs> and you get to the that specific record. So sometimes when you're finding your code or in some error message, you first find a sysid, you can use this one to locate 
what the hell it is. Then, of course, as you saw, it can take a little bit longer. So what you can do instead, and for that, just to show you, you don't have to be a security admin, is the thing called fixed script. Pretty neat, I made this one. Pretty much just a name and some description and what you do. And what I did here actually is I, I just made a, <laughs> a easy one. So you can take in the sysid. Is it still on the clipboard? No, well, let's do like this. And then when I get the result, I also paste it in the log. And depending on the script background, from here you have the editor, so you can get the help and all of that. You don't have to be scared that it doesn't save the code when you go back in the browser and so on. And now when you run it, you can either run it directly or in the background meaning I can hit it there. Then I can go and do other stuff. And I can click here. And as you can see, I did a different testing. And now I can see it's still running. Let's refresh. Now, oh, it's complete. And just to show you, a little bit of information how long it takes uh, and, and so on. Then we can go to the logs. And you can see here, it's the same information as you have in the script background. So that is one neat script to be using. And don't worry about these scripts which I mentioned before. I will put them on an update set. You can download them as well and, and use them. And I'll show you later on in the video as well how you do that. The other one is that you sometimes end up that you want to find records that has the same value. For example, I know in my old job or a company, we had a problem with users having the same email addresses. So I made like this. For example, you can see that Beth she got three, three users with the same email address and so on. It's, it's kind of hard finding those. Perhaps you have 20,000 users. Otherwise you might want to group by email and try to have a, an eagle's eye trying to find out where it is not the one and so on. So what you can do is back to the script includes and this script is also in the update set. I call it get duplicates. And this is actually also an old script from the beginning I think I found on the ServiceNow lead blogs and I just uh, added pretty much this parameter as well. What this does is that you say which table, which column or field and how many times the value should is allowed to be appeared before you actually say hey let's save this one. So what it does is it goes into the table and you can see it used the glide A rate count. We only want to see the active ones. It should count this field that we have put up here. And of course it shouldn't be zero in that field. Then we group by and then here we're pretty much saying that we only want to have those where you count them that they are more than one. So if I put one here when I call this function, it will only return those who have more than one appearance in the record field. And then we push that of course. So if we go back to our script background, just to show you. Oh, there you go. So if I, for example, go here and let's do GS debug. And we says this is user and it's the email field we would like to say and all the different ones. There's more than one. Oops, I forgot one of those. And say. What? Get duplicate. Ah. Now you can see the problem with not using the script. So now I can see that these three email addresses actually have more than once. 
And uh, just two seconds, I'm gonna see what's, so that's a good way of being able to, to pause the record. So we're back, we're fine, okay. Now I can of course go back and search for each of them from my hand, but that shouldn't be so useful. So let's do it like this. We'll take that information and we go to the sys user table. And now it's more of the magic ones. Now we can go and say email field is, and then we pipe, type JavaScript colon, and we enter the exact same code, the function with all the information, and then run. And now we can say it returns those email addresses, and now I only see the users that actually have those, which is a really neat way to find them. And then from here, I can either group by or delete or do whatever I want. And of course, I can use that in any field I want as well. So that is the second cool thing that you can actually do stuff like this in the filter builder to find things that you might not have found an easy way before. And of course, we can do, as I showed you before, in the script. In the script include, you can have one of these by own, or you can make like this, put your own little class, and then make them here as well. And if I would like to use it like this instead, let's go to the sysusers. Then I would have to type new, and that class was Acme use full utils, like that. And we got the same information. Just remember, when you're supposed to use it out here and it doesn't work, it's because you haven't checked the client callable. So if I go to script includes and you get duplicates, if that wasn't checked here, then this one wouldn't work. That's good to know as well. And remember, since it's client callable, people can use the browser console to call these functions as well. So when you put it in here, for example, then the find sys ID also is client callable. So what I did was I changed this to have a glide record secure call instead, just to make sure that uh, <coughs> that if someone calls it from the client, it doesn't really hit those tables that the client logged on user can, can't see. So good one to use that sometimes as well. Now to show you, I will put it in the YouTube video in last as well. I will put these scripts in my GitHub, in this link, and I'll put them up here. And I'll also do like this for every video where you can click on the video. And since it's not so easy to download files from GitHub, if not want to download the whole repository, so you can either cli right click save as, or you can as well just, yes, where were I? Uh, yeah, exactly. I will put up a section freeze one with the video link and uh, after set download, just right click, save as, because otherwise you have to click here, click here, click raw, and right click, save as. So I'll probably be a little bit simpler for you to just right click out here with a different link. So I'll put a link directly to here in this YouTube video as well. Well, that's about it. Hope you will enjoy it. And until next time, see you later.